iOS on tour. It's only Sport. Martin Devlin, Lachlan War building up to this crunch semi-final, the winner-take-all match against Argentina. Sir Steve Hansen joins us. He's a man who has been involved in three World Cup semi-finals. And, of course, one with Graham Henry, 2011 at home, 2015 on the road, and then Tokyo. Welcome back to the show, mate. Thanks, mate. Love to be back. Well, approaching this match against Argentina, uh, what goes through your mind as you're a coach, as I said, you've been in this position three times before. How do you prepare for a semi-final and how different is it to prepare, say, for a quarter-final? Uh, well, there's no difference because they're all finals, really. The, the first thing you've got to do, understand is um, you don't progress to where you want to if you don't win, so... The mindset they have for the for the quarter final has to be repeated, and it's one of the hardest things to do is to to go back as deep and as honest as you did, you know, the first time. So that's what you're working on. You're working on making sure your group understands that, and the, and they're working hard at uh, their preparation. It's not being interfered with with their subconsciousness of thinking about, you know, we've beaten this team before and they're easy or they're not thinking subconsciously about the final. They're just thinking about where their feet are and doing what they need to do on that particular moment, that particular day, uh, to get ready to, to re- have a performance that is going to be good enough to take you through to the next uh, stage. Is it easy or how easy is it to isolate and separate? Because you've got to celebrate, don't you, that, that win. Like on against Ireland, that was just a, such a magnificent win for the All Blacks. You've got to allow yourself to breathe, to enjoy that, and then reset, don't you? Yeah, 100%. Every, every uh, win has to be celebrated. Uh, you know, obviously there's... there's um, there's restraints on how big a celebration when you've only got a six-day turnaround or and so forth, but it, it needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be um, enjoyed the moment, and uh, then that allows you to put a full stop on it and move on to the next uh, opponent. You know, looking at the semi-finals that you've been involved in, um, the win against Australia in 2011 was just such a magnificent all-black performance. The game against South Africa, though, in England was probably a lot closer than most people thought it would be, but you wouldn't have thought that. And then, of course, against England. Did we get ambushed in in, in, in Tokyo? No, we didn't get ambushed, but I think what happened was we it was our third semi-final in a row. Uh, I think we were very happy with how we played against Ireland and Subconsciously, I think we relaxed a little bit. We took our foot off the pedal. Um, we had a few things happening. Uh, one of them was Rito being injured, and uh, I was probably a little bit soft on them because I wanted them to keep that confidence even if Rito didn't play. So, And then I probably didn't get a couple of selections right. So, um, you know, they were all great learnings, and hindsight's a wonderful thing. So you can't go back and have another go, but this was a group of coaches and management and and players who are going to get an opportunity. So, you know, they'll, they'll remember 2019. You won't have to say anything about it. You won't have to talk about it. Um, they'll have their own memories and, and thought processes which will drive them to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's interesting that you say that because at the team naming presser, Ian said exactly that. He said, look, he said, now on reflection, maybe we patted ourselves on the back a little too much after beating Ireland. And, you know, because a lot of questions were asked about how do you get over this, the euphoria of this particular win and refocus. Um, Dane Coles also said earlier in the week, he said, and I, I won't mince words, he said, the last thing you want to do is play that bronze medal match. It's a shit week that week. And he said, you know, so, you know, he said, you're talking about Mondays and you want to turn up on that kind of Monday, which means you're playing a final as opposed to that kind of Monday, which means you lost the semi final. Mm, 100%. And until you. Uh, suffer some adversity and understand what that feels like. Um, there is a there is a chance that complacency can happen, but uh, because it's happened before, I don't think it'll happen this time. I think they'll turn up, and if they're good enough, then they'll be good enough. It won't be won't be through complacency. 
How long does it take? I mean, do you, do, you, do you still look back at it now? I mean, you said, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Do you have regrets or do you just think, look, you had wonderful moments and that wasn't a wonderful moment and you just got to get on with life? How, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you kind of view it? Uh, <laughs> this is the odd day that you have a wee thing about it and you think, oh, you silly bugger. But, um, then you sort of console yourself with the fact that, you know, okay, well, there's a hundred and six other tests and you got those those weeks right. So, well, most of those weeks right. So, um, it wasn't too bad and you can't win everything, I guess, <laughs> even as much as you want to. It wasn't too bad, mate. I don't know what your success record was, but you won World Cups and it was over 80-something 80, 80 silly percent. So just in terms of Foz, you know him really well. What's he going to be thinking about right now ahead of this game? Uh, making sure the preparation's right and everyone's in the right space, uh, starting with himself and working his way through the group. And, you know, he, he'll he be desperate uh, to make sure they, they get through the final. As, as I said, he's been through 2019 and it hurts, you know, and you don't forget that hurts. So he's got an opportunity to fix that, not only for himself and the boys that were there, but for the other guys who who didn't do it right in 2019. As far as the selections go, you mentioned before, you think you got a couple wrong in 2019. He's stuck with essentially the same side. He's brought Mark Talea back in, a couple of tweaks on the bench, but staying with essentially the same 23. Did you expect that? Yeah, I thought he might give uh, Brody a, a spell and bring Whitelock in there, the two older locks, and he's, I think he's been smart around his, um, you know, how he's utilising them. Like Scooter's playing so well, he's uh, he demands a spot. But the other two getting a wee fresh and up, and you know, wouldn't surprise me if they did manage to beat Argentina. Uh, that that changes again. So um, depending on the circumstances of how they come through the game. Talia was always going to come back, you know, um, he was the guy they wanted right from day one, but he he, uh, he turned left when he should have turned right, so he now, has no, he, know, he now knows the difference between right and left, so he's, he's allowed back in, and uh, I don't know, what, what are, is there any other changes other than those two? Yeah, Dane Coles um, is, been, is off the bench, and, and Samasoni takes his place on the bench. Yeah, well, he might be just giving Coles a wee breather too. He's not getting any younger, is he? No, okay. So when you talk about the turning left and turning right, there's a famous quote I always remember of yours where you say, look, you know, your players, it's a bit like your children. They do things and they do things that end up pissing you off at some time. But what do you do? you still got to love them. You've got to give them some tough love. Is that is that is that what has happened here? Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, uh, rugby, your, your rugby team is like your family. Like, it's full of people that you love and and uh, just sometimes you don't like their behaviour and it's no different than your kids, is it? You, know, you love your kids, but sometimes you don't like their behaviour and, and usually there's a consequence. Well, Mark's had his and that was to watch the game and uh, he's done that and now he'll be raring to go, I'm sure. Sir Steve Hansen is with us. Tell us about that quarterfinal. You watched that quarterfinal. How much pride did you have in that performance? Oh, I loved every minute of it. I was on my feet and doing wee jigs and go on. screaming screaming at the telly. I haven't been excited about a game of rugby for so long. It's been great. And, you know, everybody you speak to telling you it's the greatest game they've seen. And, yeah. you know, I, say, I, I often say to them, well, that's the difference when you – you don't know the result and you know we were genuine underdogs and um but we were underestimated too i think by the irish not only the team but the the public and you know that's a dangerous thing to underestimate an all-black team was it a surprise to you that they were able to lift like that? Because it was quite similar to going to Joburg. I mean, I've always said I love an all-black side backs against the wall and everyone writes us off, everyone hates us. And that was a similar situation in Joburg. So did you draw that parallel? Yeah, I was, I was confident that we would, we would uh, play really well. And I was confident that by doing that, we would put them under a wee bit of pressure and maybe subconsciously bring out the fear of, shit, here we go again in the quarterfinals. And, um, you know, they haven't managed to get past that, and it's starting to become quite a big rock now for them. And, you know, that's what we did. We bounced out and got a good start, 13 points, and they were playing catch-up for the rest of the game. And, you know, our guys controlled the game pretty well, I think, right throughout. Yes, uh, they got back in it, and yes, 
you know, the last uh, 40 phases were hard mm-hmm. to watch if you were a New Zealand supporter because you thought something might go wrong. But I think we had control of the game uh, most of the way through it. And, you know, the, the best team won. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Fascinating you say that about the control because Ian said that in the presser afterwards. He said, look, it was obviously it's very tense and you're on the edge of your seat because, you know, one mistake, one offside, one penalty, they get to go again. But he said that he felt that Ireland were flat-footed at that stage. Maybe they'd run out of ideas. And if our guys made our one-on-one tackles, and in the end, Geordie did that, held up over the line previous to that, and then Sam got the turnover. So, you know, I mean, you get to see it from a different set of eyes than us because you've obviously been there and done that as well. Did you feel the same as him, as you say? That you kind of were, that you thought, yes, if we can just make those tackles. Yeah, look, I, I thought, you know, when they had to score to win the game, then they were in a little bit of trouble because they didn't, you know, hadn't been in that situation for quite some time, and they hadn't ever been in that situation in the quarterfinal where they've experienced coming through the other side of it. So there's a lot of self doubt going on uh, unless they're. You know they're a lot mentally stronger than anybody else I know, and and you know you start second guessing yourself. You start starting to to wonder, oh God, is it going to happen again? And and um, the things that just happen naturally for you as a rugby player start to get a little bit uh, off centre, so to speak, and your time is not quite right, or you just don't get that pass away that you normally would get away, and. You don't get to where you're net meant to be, and it becomes a little bit individualistic. And you know, people start thinking, right, well, I have to win this game by myself, and rather than playing as a team. And one of the great Irish strengths is their ability to play as a team. But when you take that away from them and they become individualistic, they're like everybody else. You know, they can they're stoppable. You know, Ian has been criticised all the way along uh, for loyalty of selection, staying with his tried and true, but he's been determined to do that. And now that everyone's fit, as I said earlier, you've got almost the same 23 playing. How important being in that position is that loyalty? And I look at Sam Kane because, again, Sam has come under a lot of criticism. He probably had his best game in an all-black jersey where, you know, against Ireland, 22 enormous tackles, his work rate, his inspiration, all of that kind of stuff. You know, just, just being an all-black coach, is it essential that you do give guys, you know, I suppose that peace of mind that, listen, I will back you? Oh, 100%. You've got to back up the people that you believe are good enough to do the job. And look, when they're not playing well, um, you don't pick them at the start. If they're playing well, and you know, when you first become an all-back, you've got to be playing well to get picked. And then you get some history, and that history... Um, is at the highest level possible. And then when if your form goes off a bit, there's there's a number of reasons why that can happen. Now, Sam Kane's form went off uh, a little bit, and, and we all know why. He broke his neck. He came back. He had a, a, a poor run of um, games uh, for the Chiefs because he got injured again. He came back into the All Blacks, wasn't match fit, wasn't game hardened, got injured again. Like He's had a a pretty decent run of uh, of injuries on and off for the last two or three years, very much like Dan Carter. Everybody wanted Dan Carter yes. to be dropped yes. before 15, yes. and he was a world player of the year. So when you're in that situation, you know why he's struggling a bit, but you've got to give him game time to get him to come back to be the player he is. And, and you know, Fozzie and, and his selectors got the reward for that in the weekend when he played so well. Let's look at Argentina then. What is the threat from them? Uh, well, they're big up front and and uh, they've got tenacity. They'll hang in and, uh, you know, the biggest threat is we leave them in the game for too long and give them confidence to think, hey, we can win this. We've got to come out and start hard and, and smack them early and keep smacking them until they can't get up. And, uh, you know, they're back... Their backs are, uh, are very capable. They're, they're big, fast men. Um, but they try to, to, to bully you and dominate you up front. And if we can control that area and we can go forward, people like um, Mwanga and, and Barrett at the back will really control the game coming onto the ball. And, you know, we've got enough firepower to, to look after them.
A couple more questions we'll let you go. I thank you always so much for your time. So Steve Hansen is with us on the platform. Going back to that scoreboard pressure, I talked to Carl Tanana before the game, and I was really hoping, I mean, just from a fan's perspective, I wanted us to take the points on offer. I wanted us to get ahead because Ireland hadn't been behind before, and I wanted to see how they would play from behind. Is that essential in every knockout game, like this game against Argentina? Take your kicks early. Start rolling that scoreboard over. Well, I think you know you've you've got to have a feel and trust for your captain on the ga- you know on the day. But like take, taking points as they come along does create a lot of scoreboard pressure, and um, you know building threes and fives and another three and another three and another three. All of a sudden, you know you've got yourself skipped away from from them now they're now having to chase the game they're now having to play rugby they can't just play a really limited game they're going to have to use the ball and that tends to suit us when the opposition starts throwing the ball around you know it opens it up for mistakes and we're pretty good at counter-attacking and and scoring quickly off uh, turnover ball so I think it's essential yeah I think the scoreboard pressure is massive South Africa versus England how do you see that one going? I think it's going to be closer than people think. I think England um, have been poor, poor on confidence or low on confidence um, leading into this World Cup, and they're just game by game they've got more and more of it. And they're very capable forward pack, and and they're big. So um, and they're also capable in the back. So if they believe enough, and again, if South Africa go in and don't. Um, bounce back from the good quarter-final uh, performance they had and come back again 100% on target, uh, yeah, you know, they could be in trouble. But you'd expect South Africa to win it, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as everybody thinks. Who's going to make the final then? Well, whoever wins the two semifinals, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're not prepared to say it? Oh, look, who do I want to win? I I want the All Blacks to win, and I don't care who wins the other one. Simple Um, as that. But, you know, sports sports funny thing, isn't it? Like, what you want and what you get don't always um, come together. But, you know, I'd love the All Blacks to come out, play well again, and put themselves in a position to be able to play for a final, you know. It'd be wonderful. To hear that uh, the world champion winning coach that you are is skipping and dancing and yelling in front of the TV, mate, that is just what every single one of us fans did, and it is so cool that that's where you're at as well. Yeah, well, look, I love the team and I love the people in it, and um, to see them having success is second to none, really. I mean, it's it's what this tournament's all about, isn't it? You want, you want them to play well, you want them to um, enjoy themselves, and you want them to have some success, and when you see them having it, survived for another week now and um, you know we build up for Saturday morning and we do it all again Awesome talking to you as always mate thank you so much for so much time No worries cheers enjoy France Devlin Unbelievable Incredible The Platform